Breaking news this morning. Mm -hmm. Huge. Out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You've heard the chants, okay? From sea to shining sea in this particular country. Run it, Foxy! There's a team that maybe has no shot to win it all. Mm. And if you're talking about what these people are talking about, <laughs> that would be the Pittsburgh Steelers. I had no idea. Wow, wow. You know, it's like Hold up, Alex. Hold up. This is in Utah. <laughs> Life. Different sport. Oh, no. Jeez. Here's in, in the house. Uh -huh. Boy. He's there. Just at sporting events, right? That's all. Who are they talking about? That's in the hills of Virginia. Uh, Matthew Hill. Kennedy. Oh. Speaking of fire. That's oh, a That's the host of AJ Hawk's birthday party. Yeah, yeah. right. oh. You're talking everywhere. Yeah. It was being chanted to fire this particular guy because whenever you're a part of the Pittsburgh Steelers, you're part of an organization that has a fan base that is everywhere. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows the story of Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is the birth of this country. Yeah. I understand well, that Massachusetts well. and New England, we're the birth of steel, which has made everything everywhere. You. You're Lord welcome, Lord says all of the Yinzers, for the lives that were cut very short, for going into these mills, breathing in terrible things, oh, yeah. dying to create steel so that the rest of this country could be built. God God bless Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. But whenever you're coaching the Pittsburgh Steelers, you see those people all moved. That's right. As the mills continued to to kind of dissipate across the country, and oh, as, yeah. as business continued to bloom, kind of everybody. So there's Pittsburgh Steelers fans in every single city, in every single place. You can go to the Mormons. In Utah, yep, and there are Pittsburgh Steelers fans oh, yeah. in abundance. You can go to the hills of Virginia, and there's Pittsburgh Steelers mm -hmm. in abundance. You go to the capital, and there'll be Pittsburgh Steelers. So anything you do with the Pittsburgh Steelers is going to be judged in that particular light. And the offense coordinator, although they've gone 24, 19, and one over the past three seasons with this man wow. as the offense coordinator, and they have not made a move in the middle of the season, the Pittsburgh Steelers, of a head coach or a coordinator since 1941. Damn. They decide to pull the trigger Yeesh. on Matt Cannon as the offensive coordinator this morning. Now, Art Rooney II, who is the acting owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers, was the one that made this move, not Mike Tomlin. So that leads to a bunch of questions, okay? Well, then is Art Rooney II the second guy that was deciding to not fire him for this entire season? And that's why Tomlin, every time he went out to the press conference, was like, yeah, we're looking at changes. But he didn't really know because Art Rooney's the guy that's making the firings. Or... Did Tomlin not want to do it? Did Tomlin say, I don't want to do this. You're going to have to do it. And was this a decision that was just made by Art Rooney saying, my team ain't going to have this guy getting chanted out of every mm -hmm, single building yeah. that Pittsburgh is a part of because he sucks anymore? And does Art Rooney II maybe just think, I need to find out if Kenny Pickett's the guy or not? So many questions from this move by who the, made, uh, the move was made by. Let's go to the man who uh, dressed up like Matt Cannon for Halloween. That's uh -huh. right. Just Matt Cannon. Just Matt Cannon. Matt Cannon. When he potentially portrayed a devil wearing a Steelers uniform. Uh, this is Lazy. There he is right there. Just Matt Cannon. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Tone Diggs, your thoughts on the Pittsburgh Steelers moving on from a coordinator for the first time since 1941 in the middle of the season. Yes. Tuesday, November 21st, 2023. Today. Remember the day. Okay? It's a historic day. Like you said, since 1941, a move like this hasn't been made in the Steelers organization. This is a historic day. You know, in the 20th and 21st centuries, democracies, dictatorships, what? Yep. walls, what? What? they've crumbled, they've fallen, they've gone. You know, yep. people will never stand for tyranny and oppression uh -huh. like they may have in the past. Yep. And for a long time, you know, I thought the Steelers fan base was going to have to be one of those groups of people that was just going to be ruled by some dictatorship overlord who just enjoyed crushing his constituents okay. and people that relied on him for happiness and food what? Okay, yeah. and money for their families. <laughs> yeah. 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 But today, on this day, today, on this day, yeah. Tuesday, November 21st, 2023, a day we'll never forget. Remember <laughs> never. Yeah. a date we would never, ever forget. In never. the, 20th and 21st century. Yeah, we yeah. heard this. Oh, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Those two centuries. <laughs> oh, yeah, you took this the, earlier. The big centuries. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Talking, then you yep. brought up the Berlin yep, Wall. Yep, exactly. Uh-huh. Yep. A hundred. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You got 128. This is the worst we've ever. <laughs> yeah. Bring it home. <laughs> 128. Okay. 128 leaders of state have been deposed by foreign countries or foreign bodies. <laughs> Not Argentina. <laughs> Today is 129 because a dictator has died today. <laughs> oh, okay. Jeez. Wow. All right. Matt Canada's For three ruling. years, he Matt Canada dictator. did just Mickey Mouse play calling, screens, what? draws, what? jet sweeps. Jet what? sweeps. You can't throw it in the middle of the field. And today, we are free from his reign. Hell okay? yeah. Congrats, Pittsburgh. Today go, is a new day. And today is a huge day because today, um, Mark something bigger that we're actually <laughs> going to have some change. Yeah. Okay. All we wanted as Steelers fans was to know that, th- that the standard is the standard. Okay. And the standard is not being the 32nd ranked offense mm-hmm. year after year after year. And that we're trying to win Super Bowls. And with Matt Canada, there was never a chance that we were going to win Super Bowls. So today actually like is somewhere where it's like, okay, we're going to try. Cause it seemed like for the last two years, we gave him a year. But for the last two years, it felt like we weren't even trying to win, and that's just something that is not uh, acceptable as a Steelers fan and the Steelers fan base. And like you said, now, now we get to find out: was it Matt Canada, or is, is it the quarterback that we drafted in the first round? Like, is that something that we have to move on and look forward in the future, or like, is there's no one else left to blame if if it goes from Matt to the quarterback to it doesn't have to go higher than that? Than that, we could finally move on from this era that has been. It's been kind of painful and torturous, um, and, and now we finally get some answers, I think. And, and thankfully, Art came de- came in and stepped in and, and made this move because it had to be done. Um, and finally, we can move on and get some answers, I think. Art Rooney the second correct is the current acting owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He is not named after his father. Oh, he's okay. named after his father's father, yeah. sure. who obviously uh, original owner of the, the Pittsburgh chief. Steelers, the chief Art Rooney. Chief. So then there was Dan, who's Art's father, and then Art Rooney the second is after the grandfather. Okay, which I've yeah. never heard before. Cool. But he's the one who is now in charge. He says Matt Canada has been fired. There's a minute long video now coming out from Mike Tomlin's press conference, which started at noon Eastern time. Here is Mike Tomlin, I assume, addressing the elephant in the room, which is the firing of Matt Canada. Good afternoon. First, let's start with the news of the day. Um, Thank you. As I'm sure you all, you guys already know, I made a change at the coordinator position. Oh, I um, mm-hmm. Did not come to this decision lightly to be really transparent with you. Um, it's just a personal belief of mine from a leadership perspective. Uh, it is my role to absorb and protect um, those that I work with. Um, and this doesn't feel like that. Um, obviously, I'm not interested in, in assigning blame or deflecting in any way. Um, it's more of my natural nature to absorb, to be quite honest with you. I've been in this role so long, I'm quite comfortable absorbing. Um, so just rest assured um, that this decision was not taken lightly. I got a lot of respect. Uh, For Matt, personally and professionally, it was not easy, um, but I thought it was necessary. Um, This is a result-oriented business, and to be short, um, the improvements were not rapid enough or consistent enough um, for us to proceed. Um, You gotta score touchdowns in this business, you gotta win games in this business, um, and just the totality of it has us where we are um, today. Okay, so he said I a lot there, so that'll go against mm-hmm. the reports that were coming out of Pittsburgh that Art Rooney the second made this decision. Mike Tomlin said I felt like I had to do that. He talked about not getting better quick enough, yep. and I think to go to the Steelers fans' points, Tomlin has been the most patient human than yep. waiting for results because it's been a two-year process after the first year of just, is this guy? I don't know how yep. that whole thing goes. I, he talked about how hard of a decision is. That's not a message, obviously, for the media. He's also saying that to Matt Canada, mm-hmm. Matt Canada's family, Matt Canada's friends, because obviously they exist. We assume he's not a bad human behind closed doors, even though he doesn't know offensive football in the NFL that well in everybody's eyes. How do you feel about the firing? And I appreciate the way Mike Tomlin said, I've been in this role so long, normally I just take the blame myself. Yeah. So firing somebody middle of the season, he almost I, it, he almost feels like a coward. Like, 
Like, all right, so now I'm pointing blame yeah, yeah. at somebody else. He doesn't love that at all, which I can respect. All, every time Tomlin speaks, I respect it. But this move seemingly had to be done. Yeah, he always, you know, dominates the press conferences. He always seems honest and real, transparent. And obviously he doesn't feel great about, you know, uh, firing Matt. And he said not rapid enough. This was an issue, obviously, for Steelers fans going in last year, coming into this year. Uh, but now – you know what? What's going to really change? You know, you still got you still got the quarterback uh, in place. D-Bot. You still got D-Bot. the quarterback. You do it. In my opinion, you got some good talent around him. We know who George Pickens is, athletically, talent wise. Deontay Johnson, I think he's a good receiver as well. Got a, a you know good couple running backs back there, Warren and Naj. So we'll see if it actually change and it actually improves on the field. Who's calling plays? Uh, Mike right. Sullivan, okay, uh, West Point graduate, graduate, Army reports. Ranger. I would like to say we it might be quarterback coach Mike Sullivan, but there has been conflicting mm-hmm. reports on who's going to be calling plays, who's going to be the offense coordinator, and the same people that are reporting this type of stuff. No offense, we love the Pittsburgh media. Sure, shout out. They were also reporting that R. Rooney was the one that did the firing of Matt Canada. So yeah. it's like I don't think any of us really know what's real or not. Feels like there's a lot of uh, yeah darts just being thrown out mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. But you said what does it change? You know. Just like when McDaniels left. Yeah. You remember when McDaniels left? Mm-hmm. They were smoking those cigars, Devontae Adams, <laughs> dancing, doing the whole thing. I wonder, you know, because Deontay Johnson came out after the game and said, I ran a right, I ran a right route. Just so everybody's mm-hmm. saying that I ran the wrong route and Kenny threw where I was supposed to be. I ran the right one. It was Najee Harris. What did he said after the game about, yeah, we're a bit predictable. You think everybody has a team first attitude? Hmm. I want to talk about me. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he said. Oh, yeah. He literally said that. So it sounds like there is quite a few seams behind closed doors on that offensive front. George Pickens had already deleted all the Steelers stuff off oh, his Instagram. Ooh. That means something in 2023. Mm-hmm. So maybe with Matt Canada leaving, it'll be something that the boys will be able to rally around. Yeah. Because it feels like they need something like that much more than anything else. Whether it's whether it's Mike Sullivan or or Eddie Faulkner, who's a uh, running backs coach, I believe. Um the word around Tan. Tan is that the players really enjoy those two and that they were at a point where they didn't enjoy Matthew Canada as much. So, like in Buffalo, like what happened there? Like was there stuff going on where they didn't get along and then oh, they come in and Joe Brady and, and obviously it's just one game, but they looked better. Maybe just if everybody likes each other, they'll play better. Um, but to your point, like there's still, there's still a lot of uh, – there's a lot probably wrong with that offense. It's probably not going to get fixed uh, this yeah. season if I had to take a guess. Mike uh, Tomlin confirms Eddie Faulkner is Steelers' new offensive okay. coordinator. Mike Sullivan will call plays. Oh, that's good. Wait. Don't that, love that. How's that work? You got two quarterbacks. You got no quarterbacks. You got two OCs. Uh, do you have any? Mike Tomlin, smart guy. Yeah. We assume he's going to get it right. 